Okay. So, another difference between high school and college is the role that the faculty member has in front of you. Right? Their role is different than a high school teacher. Okay. Most high school teachers don't have even full undergraduate majors in the subject that they are teaching. The requirements to get the teaching degree can take so many hours that their content area has got reduced. There's actually a big fight in Indiana about this. The Department of Education said that they have to, they have to get full majors, and uh, schools of education are fighting back and saying, no, they need all this classroom management they need less content. There's a battle going on right here at the university as we speak about that very fact. Okay? So most high school teachers, at least the way they're still being educated now, spend more time talking about classroom sociology and classroom management than they do about learning the subject that they are teaching. Right? Even those that get a master's degree usually are getting a master's degree that is not related to their classroom content. It's still about education philosophy and methods, not about their content. Right? When you get to university, what, what, how are co your college professors different just in title the first time you walk into the room? What do you call them? Doctor. Doctor. Why? Because they're doctors, right? Most college professors have a PhD, right? And to earn a PhD, they have earned it in their specific subject, subject area, not in education, right? Now, in order to get that, they had to do research so that they know, stop it, so that they know a specific topic, they know more about some specific topic than anyone else in the world, right? Now, for example, my topic was, you ready for this? The purification and characterization of human liver beta-3, beta-3 alcohol dehydrogenase. Are you impressed? I probably still know more than anyone in the world about human liver beta-3, beta-3 alcohol dehydrogenase. Now, there's one important reason for that. What's that? I think your face says it all. Nobody else cares. <laughs> right? I mean, you know, but we're odd ducks. We wanted to learn more about something that no one else cared about than anyone else in the world. And everyone who has a PhD has that thing that they know more about than anyone else in the world. Right? But we may, we have learned how to be experts in that one thing, but nowhere in my background, it's improving a little bit, especially in the sciences, but nowhere in my background is someone teaching me how to teach. I've never been taught how to teach. I make it up as I go, and my students will attest to that, right? So, even those people here who have master's degrees often did that master's degree not in, an, you know, in education, but by doing research in their content areas. So, that makes us different. We are experts, and what we really are here for is as a content resource. A college faculty member's responsibility is not to fill all of your learning time. Although some of them, as my, my general chemistry students will attest given the number of emails they got from me today, some of us get better at that than we would like, at filling learning time both inside and outside the classroom. But that's not really our role. Our role is to act as a content resource direct you to the important content, answer your questions about the content, but how you structure your learning around that content is really much, you know, mostly your responsibility in that two-thirds of the time that you're spending on the material outside the classroom. Does that make sense? 
So, given that we're different, what are we trying to accomplish in class? And part of this has to do with the way we are assessed and accredited as well. In a high school class, the teacher tends to present the material so that, stop it, so that the average student, and this is important, especially as it relates to uh, someone who lives in my household, that stayed awake and paid attention will understand everything done in class that day. Right? We can't account for the ones who went to sleep. Right? They're lost. But a high school teacher's goal is that everyone who paid attention for the 45 to 57 minutes, I don't know why high schools insist on having these odd class minute times, right? So everyone that was in class and paying attention for that 45 to 57 minutes that, that you had class should leave knowing what you did that day, right? In a college class, we're looking at it differently. Again, we're assuming that we have a student that stayed awake and paid attention. But we are going to present the material in a way that after that 50-minute class, that student that stayed awake and paid attention will need to work between one and two hours after class to understand everything done in class that day. That's a very different standard, right? That is, if we don't confuse you a little bit in class, we didn't teach you enough. That's really the standard in college. We need to present you the important points a little faster than you can think about them so that then you go back and spend that one to two hours outside of class figuring out what the heck we said, right? So if you're sitting there thinking, oh man, they're going so fast, I can't keep up, you're right in the right place, right? Instead of feeling uneasy about that, you should go, whew, they're trying to give me my money's worth. And the only time you should be concerned is if, remember, if it takes you more than that one to two hours to figure out what was done in class, right? If, if you find it's taking you three, four, five hours to make sense of what was done in one class, then there's a disconnect between your understanding and what the faculty member is presenting. But if you can figure it out in one to two hours, things are, things are going the way they are supposed to, okay? So, the, uh, another bit difference is the level of work and understanding. Okay, so here we go. In high school, the level of work is chosen in most classes. Now, I'm not talking about AP classes, but I'm talking about sort of, you know, your standard class that everybody has to take, right? The level of work is chosen so that everyone that, it, that achieves above a set minimum standard or does the assigned work will pass the course, right? The goal for the, the sort of the, the, the average high school course is that everybody there should be able to understand what is presented and pass the course. Again, what's, the, you know, what, what's my caveat to that? If they stayed awake and paid attention, right? We've always got that consideration because we all... We all know the people that we went to high school with that did neither of those two, right? You don't have to name them, but I, you know, I, I graduated from high school 34 years ago, and I still know which ones those are, right? Okay. So, in college, the level of work is chosen differently. Okay, one, in college there is more of a tendency to sequence courses. One course is required in order to move on to the next course. I've got a bunch of nursing students here, right? That happens with you, right? You're starting to experience that, that you're expected to know something in this course that you learned in a course a semester ago, a year ago, sometimes two years ago, right? And so... 
the level is chosen so that a student will either know the material required for a following course in the sequence, or in the case of skills, right? You guys have to learn skills in nursing. You will have the skills required for some following expectation in the sequence, right? So we're not thinking about just this course. This course is not a standalone. This course is preparing you for something else. And it's the standard needed to be successful in the next step that determines the standard for this class. Okay? So, within the curriculum, we've got that. Now, I am the pre-medical advisor. So, I'm not the only one, but a lot of my students are wanting to go to medical school or dental school or pharmacy school. Right? So, I've got another consideration when I'm teaching my courses. That is, they have to know the material and have the skills that are expected by professional schools, if that's where they go, graduate schools, or, gee, something trivial like going out and getting a job. So I'm looking at the standard not of just are they learning 70% of the material? My standard in my biochemistry course is, does this student know enough to succeed when they take biochemistry in medical school or in dental school or in pharmacy school? And every faculty member here has that same consideration depending on what kinds of students they teach. So we cannot set an internal standard with our courses. Our courses have to be standardized by what's needed in the curriculum and what's needed once students are done here. 